What's the dumbest question you've ever been asked? Where did we meet? <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. Who the f asked that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do something where I want to go right, right, right back to the womb. Yes. How was the womb? Was it good? No. It was so comfortable. Oh. I every day I wake up and I realize another day. We want to go lived. back. <laughs> yeah. Can they put us back? No. Well, I mean, I the, so. the night is young. Who knows what science is going <laughs> to deliver us? <laughs> when was the moment you both realized you had musical talent and it was something shared? We actually just watched a video uh, a couple days ago when we were about six months old and we're in our little bassinets and we're bouncing each other because our feet are touching each other's and we're singing in harmony. Like there's no words, just a lot of noise coming out, but we're actually doing it in harmony and in sync with each other. Intrinsically, there was something there from the very beginning that we were always meant to do. We started doing like little performances and so we were actually on stage from the age of five. In all the years since, have you ever, have you ever considered something else? No. no. Could you do anything else? No, <laughs> well, no. This is it. Cause you play me like a symphony. We grew up in the north suburbs of Brisbane. When you step into the music industry or Hollywood, I mean, we moved to Hollywood, we were 19 years old. We moved out of our parents' house in Brisbane to Los Angeles, by middle ourselves. of Hollywood, by ourselves. Just signed the biggest deal with Warner Brothers Records over there that, you know, had been signed in like the past 10 years or something. But none of the, none of the stuff that came along with that was ever our frame of reference for what is important and real. Yeah. That's something that you're sort of like, like here's a world that you get to step into and play with and use your- That was your fun. <laughs> yeah. That yeah. was exciting Activity. and fun, but it was never real. But if you take your value on other people's opinion of you, that can only really rock you if you aren't sure of who you are. But that's, I mean, that's so many people in, in careers in the public eye. You hear people talk about getting the fire they get from- validation. Yeah. See me, look at me. We were very much like that as kids. I mean, there's videos of Jess saying, I'm the star of the show, look at me. Yeah, I felt very unseen as a twin. <laughs> yeah. You're treated like one person from everybody. And it's like, well, no, but me. Like, yeah. but why don't you see me? When did that, that idea sort of crystallise in your head that you were fighting individually to be seen, even though you obviously have this great deep connection? Is there a moment where you both went, I actually, I do want to be seen as me by myself? 25. 25, wow, that was way more specific than I was expecting. I would not have <laughs> even realised that that was something that was playing out until we were about 25. I personally don't think I ever struggled with it. Okay. There was definitely moments when... I think clearly, it was that you felt like... Lisa, Lisa had a harder time with me individualising, whereas I had a harder time individualising. Right, okay, yeah. yeah. Does that make okay. sense? Sure. Did, do you, no, no, well, yeah, like, yeah, I was confused. I was confused because Jess was doing quite dramatic things to set herself apart. No, see, well, I would see, no way. Set myself apart. No, but no, I was no, no. Just but that was myself. my interpretation yeah. of oh, okay, it. Right, Jesse, right. let me <laughs> talk, please. I was just to correcting set, I was, well, you're correcting it. I'm okay. Just let me finish talking and I'll correct it myself. But what I mean by that is I took it personally when really Jess was just expressing herself. So it's like, oh, Jess went and got all these like, tattoos down her arm like that's because she wants to be different from me but really you know Jess was into tattoo culture that was like a genuine interest of hers that I didn't necessarily have so things like that I think were kind of confusing for me yeah. do you think the focus that gets put on your relationship because of the twin factor do you think it's perhaps an unfair level of scrutiny. I, I get it, I'm fascinated with twins. I've read so many books on twins. I had a twin therapist who would literally deconstruct the psychology of an upbringing of twins, specifically identical twins. So I get the fascination with it. People it's love to- It's also that safe place to put your energy because there's so much going on. I mean, you're on the road, there's so many outside forces, there's a lot of pressure, there's a lot of work. Where are you gonna turn? Cause you can't, you really shouldn't yell at people around you. No. So where are you gonna put that 
space. It, that, that energy that goes stress. towards each other. <laughs> if you have a fight with your sibling, you probably don't have to deal with them for like a week or but two. But this I is mean, a family business, right? This is a family <laughs> business. Our livelihood depends on us somewhat getting along. You know, because I love the somewhat. <laughs> there's somewhat. <laughs> there's a range we can work in. Well, you know, a very wide range. But it's, it's like, yeah, you know, it is such an interesting You know, the one thing dynamic. that is interesting is how many games people will get you to play as twins that pit you against each other. Mm. And that's something that as we go older and older, that's we realise that that's realize. actually not very healthy because who's the cleaner twin? Who's, who's the always better late? singer? Who's mm. the better singer? Who's the prettier twin? Who's the Nobody's ever asked us who the twin. prettier twin is because that's very obvious. You two, seriously. <laughs> If you, could you set me up for that. You set me mind. up for that. It's alright, she can be the fruit one. I'm okay. kidding. I'm married. I'm, I'm married. So I don't, I I don't even have to be pretty. Means, I guess that means she's the prettier twin. You also, you also like buy into it in a, like you know there are cameras on you right now, so you're doing, you buy into it in a cute kind of way as well. I, I have oh. no idea what you're talking about. We've had cameras <laughs> on us since we were five years old. My parents taped everything. We literally have an entire warehouse. I what wish. it is, is we're with each other a lot. Mm. So we have a witness. <laughs> we have a, a witness 24-7. Yeah. You're being witnessed by somebody 24-7. So is that accountability or does that feel like surveillance? I accountability. <laughs> it's Sorry, accountability. We said, call, you know how call-out culture is becoming a big thing yeah, online? Yeah, yeah. We've, li we've grown up with call-out culture right here. You were saying you were raised basically being filmed from a really, really young age. Mm. Honestly? Were there times you kind of wished there was less material there? Oh, oh, we love it. You know, it's actually beautiful. We have so much footage. We were showing our mom. Our, our mummy isn't well at the moment. So sitting down with her and being able to look back through it all recently was one of the most beautiful experiences. If we knew then what we do now. Your mum is going through dementia at the moment. Yes. What, what have you learnt as you've seen your mum? go through that. I think that when you see somebody that you love diagnosed really shows you you're confronted with mortality. Your entire family is confronted with the idea of mortality when most people don't have to necessarily confront it to that level. It's very confronting. Have the videos been helpful? The Incredible. Greatest, yeah. And, and music too. So with people living with dementia, yes. um, music actually sits in a different part, is processed through a different part of the brain. And so somebody even in the very late stages of dementia, if they hear music, they can still experience certain things, memory or feeling recall to those songs. And she's the one that actually said, you know, Where's your music? Get back in the studio. I want to hear new music. And it was like, okay, it's time. Jess, Lise, thank you both so much for talking to us. Really appreciate it. You're amazing. Thank that you was for awesome. such an awesome oh, chat. Thank you. Like truly, oh. That was really special. What a wonderful chat. Hey there, my name is Mark Fennell, and if you enjoyed that, and I'm hoping that you did, then make sure you like and subscribe to the Feeds YouTube channel and definitely watch that thing that I have absolutely seen before. Really good.